Hi, this is Lauren with Craft Some Joy. Welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, I just want to say a warm welcome. And for those who are subscribers, once again, thank you so much. You are the heart of my YouTube channel and I appreciate your subscription. As I've been going through and looking at different album projects that I've been working on, I thought today would be a great time to give you some tips and tricks on how to create interactive scrapbook pages, different techniques and ways to add additional photos to your pages, and just some fun product tips that you may or may not have uh, heard about when using the Creative Memories albums. Now, one thing I just wanna mention, as you've probably seen by my channel, I do load my albums with photos. So my photos really are important to my scrapbooking process. And that's why you'll hear me say, your photos are the star of your pages. And so being able to find ways to add additional photos to layouts is really exciting for me. And I found uh, several different fun DIY ways to do that that I'm gonna share with you today. So let's jump in and talk about one of the first ways you can add additional photos to your album pages. This is my Christmas album, and I shared a while back how I was creating December daily pages for this past Christmas. And one of the products that I was using in order to do that were the Creative Memories pocket pages. I'm gonna show you what those look like. They come in a pack like this. These are the 12 by 12 multi pocket pages. And so each one of these pages fits into your album just like a normal page. It has the brackets here that slip in through the strap hinge binding. And then each page has five slots on the front. These pages also come with this white, really nice thick cardstock already slid into the page so that it automatically gives you a place to put your photo on the top and on the back. So these pages are just a nice addition in a normal scrapbook album when you have quite a few pictures that you just want to slide in if you're doing so you can mix this in with a traditional page just like I have here. So it it works perfectly with a traditional page and then you can add in pocket pages. So the fun thing about these pocket pages is that you can also not only use each one of the pockets, but as you see here, I've also added a peekaboo pocket. And so you can go ahead and just add that right to the top of your page. So I just added it right here on the top. And then that creates kind of another interactive element that you can use on your page. So you, you, so you probably know how much I love this product. These are the peekaboo pockets and I tend to buy quite a few packs at once and I just keep them in one of these storage boxes. And so I have them handy because I do use this product quite a bit and they're just a great way to add additional pictures to your layout. Because as I said, I love my pictures. And to me, that's most important to get every picture that I want on my page the best way I can. So for a flip style pocket to do something like this, all I did is I took a peekaboo pocket and the trick for these little pockets is to remember that the slit is on one side and on the side opposite the slit is where the adhesive strip is. So if you can see how I pulled that adhesive strip off and you can also see how absolutely clear that strip is that you are actually going to be adhering to the plastic. So there's really, you, so you really can't tell when you flip these up there's just a tiny bit of a line, but everything is really, really clear and you can just look right through that plastic and see what's underneath. So I love this interactive element. So you can see on this pocket page, this is the same type of pocket page that I used here. 
I ended up putting a flap here, a flap here, and a flap here. So now I have all this space that I can add to this one page. So each one of these flips up and shows what's underneath. So each flap, instead of just having one slot for a photo here, now I have this, I have this, and I have this. So each space has three different areas that I could add journaling, decorations, or pictures. So it's really kind of fun. Now, these are horizontal format, and as you know, the peekaboo pockets also come in a vertical format, and you can see that I've used them a vertical format on this section. So here I actually chose not to use a pocket, but here I did use the flip up, and this is just a drawing that my daughter Ellen did because she had seen the new Frozen movie and she loves to draw characters from those movies. So this was something fun she had done in the moment after we saw the movie. So I wanted to add that to my December daily pages. So that's just another tip too. Whenever you have artwork or different things, you can always shrink it down to the size of a photo and just slip it right into your album and have it there as a representation of an art from one of your children. So that's an easy way to add space to pocket pages. Now another trick I have seen create what they call a waterfall page with the same idea, but what you would do is just include extra pockets underneath each one of these flaps, and then you can just do kind of a waterfall all the way down your page of all the different pockets. So that would be something you could do if you had quite a few photos of a certain event or something like that. You could just add a lot of different peekaboo pockets and create a waterfall effect. So that's one really fun way to use the pocket pages and the peekaboo pockets. So I'll just kind of show you another set here. And one of the things I like to do sometimes is include a little edge and that kind of designates that that is a flap that you can lift it up. That's kind of fun to do. Create a little interactive element there. And again here, I did a vertical flip up so that you can see. And just as an aside for my December daily, this is all done according to what happened during the month in December and the things that I wanted to document and write about. And if I needed more space, I added a peekaboo pocket so that I could have more to talk about and a more space for a photo. And if I didn't need it, I just left it in the pocket just like that. Okay, so that's a little bit about the Creative Memories pocket pages and how to use the peekaboo pockets in addition to these pocket pages to create some special fun interactive pages in this type of album. Okay, so now I wanna show you what I have done in my travel album in order to create some fun elements and interactive pages and some additional space for my photos. And I have a, a few different things that I've done in this album and I thought that would be kind of fun to share with you. So you might have seen some of the pages from this album in my print at home video, which I highlight how I've got these gorgeous, beautiful prints right from the comfort of my own home, which I love. And if you are interested, I'll make sure to link the video so that you can learn how to print your own photos. I still haven't found anything that I like better than this process. And so, I thought it would be kind of fun to have kind of a little pull out element where I could just go ahead and tell a little bit about the hike that we took when we had to get to this photo spot because it was a really, really long hike. And so I just wanted to make sure to go ahead and keep that story tucked in. And then I did both sides of this little card and labeled where it was and then put a couple little stickers. And then that just slides right in to this little pocket, this little paper pocket. So what I used in order to make this little tag was the Creative Memories 3-in-1 Tag Punch. And so I just used the largest size tag I could do, which is a two and a half inch 
tag. So I cut a piece of blue cardstock, navy blue cardstock, and I cut it at five inches because I wanted to make sure that my tag was not going to be so long that it didn't go underneath this photograph. And then what I did, so then I went ahead and punched it, and then I just got a pen and wrote my journaling right on top. Then what I needed was to figure out a way to put this so that it would just slide right in because I do use page protectors on my pages. And so I didn't want to put these on. I, I hope it's not too much glare, but anyhow, the page protector does slide right on. And I wanted the element to be able to be pulled out even with the page protector on. So I just added a little baking twine to the end of the tag. And I loved that the tag punch had this kind of little hole that you could do that. And then even with the page protector on, I can just slide that right under. So in order for this tag to have kind of a place to slide into, I just took this sheet of paper and cut a long strip, folded it in half, and then adhered that down. And then I adhered my photograph right on top. So if you see this kind of goes right into a, a double-sided little sleeve right under the photo so that it doesn't get hung up on adhesive. But I did do adhesive all along the top and all along the bottom so that that holds this little pocket in place that I can slide the tag into. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. But anyhow, there are a lot of different ways you can make kind of a fun little interactive element. But what my main focus, again, as I said, is I always protect my pages. So I wanted something that I could just use in addition with my page protector. So that was one element that I added. So another element, again, is going back to my favorite, which are the peekaboo pockets. And this is how you use those peekaboo pockets directly on a traditional two page spread. So you can see here, I did a spread when we went horseback riding and I needed, again, to get as many of these wonderful pictures of this adventure in these two pages that I could because when I'm working on a travel book, what I try to do is kind of contain each little section of the trip into a two page spread. If it was quite a extensive event, then I may do more than just two pages. But even though I had a few extra photos, I didn't want to go ahead and make another two page spread. So instead, I love the ability to just use these pockets and be able to get my journaling and my photos right here on these two pages. So this was when we arrived at Yellowstone National Park and you can see where I place my peekaboo pockets are right along the edge of the page, either the in inside edge or the outside edge like right here. And the reason I do that again is for the use of page protectors. So when I slide the page protector on, it goes on just right up into here and then the peekaboo pocket sits on the outside of the page protector and so people get to have an interactive experience with my page and be able to open that little flap and yet the other pictures on my page are protected because I have the page protector on so you can see it works both when you set your peekaboo pocket on the inside of the page as well as on the outside of the page. It's the same idea. So you just slide the page protector on and then you have that same interactive element right here on your page. Okay, so that just creates a great way to add some extra journaling and use your peekaboo pockets for adding those special photos. And again, one of the things I like to do is kind of put a sticker on both sides of the flap so that that kind of lets people know that is an interactive element and that they can open it. Now, one other tip I wanna mention that I realized when I was going through this layout is that we had some great video of this experience of this horseback ride. And one of the things that came up uh, was a question for me about what do you do about videos? And I thought that was such a great question because 
Now, what I'm trying to remember is that when I journal about an adventure or about an event, and if I know that there is a video that's associated, I made a little note right here in the journal box that says, check out the videos of our ride. And that's just kind of a little visual reminder that if we are enjoying this album and these photos and we want to go watch the video that we can look up the video on our phone and watch that and actually experience the video from this horseback ride. So that's just another little tip for you when you are journaling and creating your pages. Okay, so here is another two page spread in my travel album and I just wanted to show you another way that you can add a peekaboo pocket to your page. And if you'll notice, probably from the reflection, I already have a page protector on this page. So I finished my journaling and that's kind of a treat that I do when I finish my journaling as I slide on the page protector because then I know that page is finished. Now on this page, I wanted to add two more photographs. And so I got a peekaboo pocket and I wanted to put these photos in here, but for my layout, I wanted it to be right here on the top of my page. So I just wanted to show you that it is also just as easy to put a peekaboo pocket directly on top of a page protector and the adhesive just allows it to stay right in place. And then all of the other photos, again, are still protected with the protector and you have the interactive element from the top of the page. So if you don't wanna work from either the inside or the outside and you wanna work from the top, you would just go ahead and put that directly on top of your page protector. So I hope you're understanding exactly how obsessed I am with these little peekaboo pockets. I do love them, but wait, there's more. Just another tip for you. So sometimes what happens is that there are a series of photographs that just kind of tell a story in and of themselves. And this is a series of photographs that did that for me. So this was when we were in the Geyser Basins at Yellowstone. And if anybody has been there, you will remember the smell of sulfur that kind of hits you as you are walking through these beautiful geyser basins. And so I was lucky enough to capture some of the photographs that kind of told the story of this sulfur smell in the geyser basins. So my boys just had a field day with the smell and tried to cover up and just try to get away from the smell as much as possible. And we all had quite a fun adventure watching them and looking at them. And uh, I needed to tell the story about that, about that sulfur smell and remembering it. But what's fun is that I had all these photographs and I needed to tell the story. And so I did that on this really fun little interactive peekaboo pocket accordion. And again, I went through and I tucked this set of sleeves underneath the page here on the outside so that again, when I slide on that page protector, these photos are gonna be protected and I still get to use this as an interactive element. So this little accordion was very easy to make. And again, as I mentioned, I used three different peekaboo pockets. And if you can notice right here, I just attached one here and then on the inside here I attached one here and then this third one I attached under the page and then you just go ahead and fold it down so that it folds into place. Now one of the things I wanted to do was have a little tag as I mentioned I love having these little tags that people can interact with. But I wanted to show you what to do when you have a sticker here on one side and then you need to do something with the sticky part that's on the other side. And so I ended up just putting a little piece of um, sticker backing paper there until I could make a little circle to go behind it. 
And there are a couple ways that you can make circles. And what I found for these stickers is that I needed to use the custom cutting templates and use the inside of the circle patterns. So I just kind of wanted to show you how I was going to do that. Now this again is a full sheet of paper and so typically what you'll notice is that I have a large strip that I mount my photos on. So if I need something like just a very small circle, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to cut that circle right here on the edge because then this whole piece of paper I've kind of ruined. But thinking ahead, when I think, oh, if I put this down as a border, a color block on a page, then where I'm going to want to make my circle is kind of right here where I would be able to cover it up with a photo. So I hope that makes sense to you. Anyhow, I want to show you just how I'll do that. So I have my little circle pattern and you can do this on your cutting mat as well. Or the Creative Memories Personal Trimmer also has this little built-in cutting mat, which is nice. And then I am choosing the blue blade. So you'll know that the custom cutting system comes with red, green, and blue. The red blade cuts closest to the pattern piece. The green blade is the middle, so just remember green is middle, and the blue blade cuts the farthest from the pattern piece. And so either on the inside or the outside, this is gonna cut, make the farthest cut on the outside or the farthest cut on the inside. So basically, this is the circle that I needed to use to uh, put behind my sticker this size. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that your pattern and your paper and everything is flat and then you go ahead and put the two pegs from your blade into the groove on your pattern piece and then you just go around in a circle just like that. And it just takes one little pass, the blades are very sharp, and then you've got a circle cut. And again, you can see that now, if I had a four by six photo, I could just lay that right on top and go ahead and cut this and use it. So that's just a tip whenever you need just a small piece from a, a piece of pattern paper that um, if you're gonna use it kind of in a larger format, just go ahead and just move the shape inside so that you can reuse the paper. Okay, so now what I have is a perfect little circle to go ahead and put on the back of this as you can see there so and so I'm just going to add a little bit of adhesive just so that it not only sticks to the sticker but that it sticks to the pocket on the inside and then I'm going to go ahead and just put that right down and now I have this really fun little interactive element that people can grab and use to check out all the fun photos. So that's just another tip on how to create a tab and it also kind of adds an element for your page, a decorative element for your page, which is kind of fun. And it, and it shows people that you have something to do on this page. So Another little tip I have for you is that, surprise, surprise, I don't know if you are aware that Creative Memories also has mini peekaboo pockets. I wish, I wish, I wish they would sell these separately and hopefully if they get enough requests, they will. But currently the mini peekaboo pockets are only available in the Happy Album kit number 13. Now there really isn't a downside to just ordering the kit because it has some really cute elements in here, but this kit was designed for the Happy Album size, but I am such a fanatic about peekaboo pockets that I just had to go ahead and purchase this kit mostly because of the peekaboo pockets. So what's really fun is that this these pockets, not only can they be used for the Happy Album, but they also give you this fun little element that you can use. And so on this page, I just needed a little place that I could add where we were on our trip, which was Morning Glory Pool. 
and then just a little bit of journaling about that area. And so again, I put it on the edge so that when I slide on that page protector, it's still able to be in an interactive element. So when you get the mini peekaboo pockets in the Happy Album Kit, you get four four by four, two two by three, and two three by two. So basically you get this in a horizontal format and a vertical format, and then you also get a four by four style pocket, which I also truly, truly love this size. And so you can see it's the same setup where it has the adhesive and the little pocket to slide in your photo. And then you can add this size right to your scrapbook page, which is another great size. The four by four is just another great size to add to your photo, to add to your pages. So you can see here, I have a place right here that I wanted to add this four by four photo. And again, I didn't leave much room for journaling. And so this is where I'm gonna add in that little four by four photo pocket. And so now I'm gonna have a place that I can add in my journaling and then just have the photo right on top. So I love, love both the versatility of these little photo peekaboo pockets for your traditional albums as well. So I keep these little guys right in the same container with my other peekaboo pockets and um, they're just ready to go whenever I need that smaller size for my albums. Love, love these. And I hope Creative Memories does come out with these that you can just purchase individually. Be so fun. And so that is a lot of different ways that you can use the peekaboo pockets for a travel album or any type of a traditional album. And so now I wanna show you another way that you can add space to your album pages. Okay, so yes, I am a little bit obsessive with my peekaboo pockets. I do really love them and I will always have a supply on hand for my album pages, but I do have some more things to share with you. So let's jump into that. Now, this is another album that I have shown you. This is Audrey's school book. This is kindergarten, first and second grade. And so I'm just about finished with this album, but I did want to share a few fun things that I've been able to add to her album. So if you have seen me flip through this album before, then you will remember I have a lot of different types of pages in her school book. And that's because there's a lot of different types of things that I want to include in her school book. So this is an example that again, I just want to mention, and these are the eight and a half by 11 pocket pages. And these are, even though they are a eight and a half by 11 format, they still fit into a 12 by 12 album format because the brackets are in the same position. And these are great to use when you have kind of smaller things to add in between larger pages. So on this here, you can see I added um, a little piece from the banner that she had when she was on, this was her very first soccer team. And so uh, they cut the banner apart and I wanted to include that in her album. And then this was a little uh, piece of art that she did. She made this cat for Halloween in kindergarten. So I just slid both of those in to the pocket page. Now, something I just wanna mention is that uh, the current pocket pages do have a jeeping, a side here that has jeeping which doesn't really make that much of a difference, but in case you have an older set of these, there's no jeeping on the side, it's just clear. But now the package comes with the jeeping. And it also comes with this nice thick piece of white cardboard so that you can actually have two sides right away. But this is also just as easy to slide out so if you wanna have more of a see-through look, you can just take that cardboard out and then you could see both sides of a document that you wanted to put in here. So again, here you can see I put in some paperwork that we had from different things like here's a brownie certificate 
And don't forget, you can still add peekaboo pockets right onto these pages as well and have that interactive element. So whenever you need to add in photos, those peekaboo pockets you can stick in just about anywhere. So I do love those. And you don't have to add a whole nother page just to get one or two photos in there. So this is a wonderful format for using, for adding in different types of certificates and things. And then they also come in these larger sleeves. These are the 12 by 12 pockets. So again, this is another way that you can add in artwork and things to your children's album. And I do know I've talked about this before, but I just want to again mention that you can add those into your book. So what's new and fun? Let me show you. I have a couple tricks up my sleeve. And one trick I learned many, many years ago was how to add something large like this, or what if it's a magazine brochure or something special that you wanted to add right in to your album. So I looked at this and you can see it's a larger format, but it does have some staples. And then if you open it, it has some really adorable things that I wanted to be able to flip through as we were going through her album. So this is just a, one of those precious things that I didn't kind of want tucked into a sleeve, but I wanted to be able to interact with. And so I'm going to show you a little trick, and that is to use an old page. And so what I did is I took one of these older pages and I trimmed it so that I just had about a two inch section left. And stay tuned because I'm going to show you exactly what I did with the other part of this page in just a minute. So now that I have this apart, I'm going to go ahead and set the inside of this aside. And then what I want to do is work with this opening so that this is going to be kind of like another page. And so if you can see, I'm lining up this little strip of an old page along with the fold where the staples used to be. Okay, so now I want what I want to do is get my cutting mat out and lay that down and then I'm going to use the page that I cut from an old Creative Memories page and then where the crease is I'm going to mark where I need to cut an opening for the brackets. Okay, so my bracket is going to go from here to here and then again from here to here. Okay, so now I have that marked out and then what you need to do is just create a little slit in this paper for those brackets, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and make a slit here and a slit here, just where I marked that those brackets needed to be. Then this now becomes the opening for your bracket. Okay, so if you can see how I just pulled those staples right through the slits, and now you're going to lace this in just as if it were another page in your book. So if you remember, it go, this is right here. It was during Generations Day for her kindergarten class that she created this. And so I would just go ahead and take the album apart and lace this right in. And then in order for these pages to be interactive, I'm just gonna go ahead and add some staples back in so that I'm gonna attach it right here to the backing before I put this page back in. Okay, so that is just a fun little thing that you can do in order to use an old Creative Memories page in a new way and add a fun interactive element to your album, just like that. And as I mentioned, this is also good if you have a brochure, maybe a playbill from a Broadway performance or something like that. This is an easy way that you can add in memorabilia to an album.
Okay, so now I want to share another fun tip. And if you recall, I mentioned that I was going to show you what I did with the other half of the Creative Memories page where I cut the side with the binding off. And as you can see, it's right here. So this type of a page is kind of what we call a fold out page. And this is another fun way to create an interactive element to your albums. You can see this is another old Creative Memories page that I had that I will be putting an entire sheet of cardstock on top of. And so once you do that, it really doesn't matter what's behind it that um, so if you have any of these older style pages this is a great way to kind of use those up and and get them into albums so if you notice this page what I did is I made sure that the fold over part was large enough to accommodate a four by six photo so you can use this format for any size I have seen people use an entire page and go ahead and you flip out an entire 12 by 12 page or you can create a smaller format one either something with a 4 by 6 this way or even a smaller format where you would put the 4 inches this way and you would just have a 4 inch flap. Okay. So I hope that makes sense. So I'm going to just show you how I'm going to do this kind of an element into Audrey's book. And I also just want to mention that it's super easy when you have this kind of a fold out that you're still going to be able to protect that page because you'll want to cut the page protector to fit the size of the flap that you have. And because there's jeeping on the edge, that page protector is not going to go anywhere. It's going to stay right where you put it. So the original page, you'll just want to go ahead and put that page protector on first, and then you'll put the cut page protector on the fold out flap. Okay, so I hope that is making sense. All right, well, let's go through it in Audrey's book and you can see exactly how I'm going to do that. So if you'll notice on this two page spread, I had this really cute picture of Audrey that was part of her package, part of her photo package during this um, 2009 softball season. And I really didn't have a good place to put it on the page. If I put it on the page, it was gonna take up a lot of real estate. And yet I didn't wanna go ahead and make a whole nother two page spread because I knew that was going to just add more bulk to her album. And so I decided to do this fold out flap and add a page to her album this way. And so, as I mentioned before, you can make these pages, again, as big or as little as you want as a fold out. And so my fold out, I needed to make sure that it would fit this photograph. So I went ahead and did that. And then again, I used the Creative Memories 12 inch trimmer with the orange scoring blade. And then I was able to score this page perfectly so that it had a nice thick fold that I could attach to this page. Okay, so once I had my dimensions out, measured out, and then I had my fold put on the page, the next part is to actually adhere it down to the scrapbook page. And as you can see, I already have a border strip down, and so I'm just gonna use my multi-purpose tool to go ahead and just lift up some of the adhesive that I used when I put that border strip down. So this is another favorite uh, use of the multi-purpose tool. I use it a lot for moving photos around and for kind of getting things up that I've already stuck down with adhesive because I, I change my mind a lot and I like the ability to change my mind. Okay, so next what we need to do is get this down with a really strong adhesive. And so the tape that I've been using to go ahead and adhere these pages down is this really strong, thick, clear adhesive 
and I'll make sure to leave a link for this in the description. But uh, I'm not sure about the photo safety of it, but because it's nowhere near my photos, I, the, when I stick this down, I'm fine. To me, the main thing was to get a strong adhesive that I knew would hold this page in place. And so I just take a strip of that red tape and put that down on the flap. And then you can see when you peel off the red, it's just a very clear adhesive that's left on there. And so now this is just going to, I'm going to tuck it right behind. You can see it's super sticky, but I'm going to tuck that right behind this border strip so that it goes right down on my page. Okay. And so now I have that flap in place. And once I have that flap in place, I may need to kind of go and see if I need to add some more adhesive to my border strip. So I'm just gonna add a little more adhesive there where I pulled it up. So I'm gonna add that down. And now I'm ready to use my beautiful new fold-out page for these extra photos that I have. And so I have some paper that I'm gonna add in first. And in case you're wondering, this is not creative a Creative Memories <laughs> product, but this is a product that I designed when I was working for our Memories for Life. And so I do know this is acid-free, lignin-free, and um, quality cardstock. So I am using these because they are kind of a fun sports set that go with this photo. Okay, so now I have that down and then I just want to cover the back side. And again, I have some more from the same collection. And so now I'm just going to add this to my fold out flap. Okay, I'm going to stick that down. So fun! So now I also have this whole inside space that I can add some fun extra photos and a journaling card to and have that as part of Audrey's book. And so once I have all that set and my journaling done again, as I mentioned, I'm just going to take my page protector and an easy way to do it is just to go ahead and lay the page protector exactly on top of your flap and then I just mark one of the little edges right here with a pen, with a permanent pen. And then again, using the Creative Memories handy dandy 12 inch trimmer, you can see that it cuts through page protectors just beautifully. So I'm lining up that little mark right along the uh, cutting guide for my trimmer and then sliding it from top to bottom. Let's make sure we're loose. Excellent. And now I have a custom cut page protector that's going to fit right on top of my fold out page. So that's just so, so fun to do and add these little fun interactive elements to your album pages. So I have one more trick up my sleeve and I just want to show you how you can use Creative Memories pages in a new way and modify them so that they can also create yet one more type of element in your scrapbook. So another thing you can do is I took this page and I actually just cut it in half so that it was equal. And then I'm going to flip it over and I'm actually going to tape these two pieces together. And what that's going to do is create this fun little flap that I can put in this album. And so then once you have your flap together, you can just again add a piece of cardstock and add your photos. And now what a fun little surprise element you have for your page right tucked inside. 
So this is just yet another way you can add a fun little interactive element right into your scrapbook, especially if you need room for just a few more photos or for journaling or something fun to add into your pages. Okay, so that was a lot of different tips and techniques on how to create interactive pages in your Creative Memories albums. And I hope you learned something new or maybe saw something that you might wanna try and add to your own albums. But I do love all of these different ways of just creating more space for your story and for your photos. Because as I like to say, your photos are the star of your pages and your story is what makes all those photos come to life. So I hope this was helpful and I'd love to hear your comments and your thoughts. And if you've actually tried any unique ways of adding pages to your albums, I'd love to hear your comments about that. Or if you are going to try them and make sure you leave those notes for me in the comment section below. And until next time, I hope you take time to work on your photos, enjoy your time, with your memories, and we'll see you in the next episode. Take care.